Hey guys, it's Maddie Simish and welcome to another video. In this one, I am going to be showing you a little speed build I did recently in The Sims 4 of a Plopsy studio. I've been watching a few YouTube videos recently of people who are kind of full-time on Etsy, like they own their own obviously Etsy store and they do it full-time and they have their own little studio where they can get super creative and and do all their like make their products whatever it may be and and do all the packaging and and the shipping and everything and uh they're really relaxing videos like they're they're really chill they've they've got a really nice um nice aesthetic and the studios that they work in as well they really caught my eye they're always sort of super light and and airy lots of plants and and pastel colors and i thought I could do an Etsy studio in The Sims 4, uh, but then I remembered that we actually have our own version of Etsy in The Sims 4, which is Plopsy. Uh, it came with the Nifty Knitting stuff pack, which was the last stuff pack to be released for The Sims 4, and I really like the pack so far. I haven't, um, I haven't really played with it. I'm, I'm kind of playing with a family uh, at the moment, and. They've all got their own careers, so I haven't had an opportunity to fully explore knitting. I've, I've tried Plopsy. Um, it's it's not the most profitable, uh, most not the most profitable thing. Uh, I know it takes quite a while to, to get listings, and I don't. I, I do think you get a little bit more money versus regular selling. Um, I haven't fully checked that out, but I think I remember reading that. Um, but I suppose selling on Etsy in real life is is difficult as well. So maybe it's. Maybe it's quite a realistic experience, but uh, who knows. Um, so I used obviously a lot of the um, nifty knitting items to to kind of complete this build. The person owning the Plopsy Studio is definitely a big knitter. It's it's got to be a knitting kind of shop on Etsy, Plopsy rather, um, because. I used a lot of like the knitted objects as, as decoration, especially here. I started off like a little um, kind of photography corner because I thought they probably want to take some nice pictures of their products to list them online. Um, so I set up a little table and of course I had to show off the really cute toys that you can knit with this pack, like oh, the tiny Grim Reaper and the octopus as well, that one's really, really cute. I'm sad we didn't get a tragic clown, I remember voting for that one, um, but I'm glad we got the Grim Reaper and the octopus and the little um, turtles as well, they are so, so cute. So I tried to use a bit of a variety in this build and, and I'm just putting them on the tables here. I've got a little, um, is it the Moschino? Sort of camera stuff and, and background because again I'm just imagining that she's shooting some pictures for listing her products on Plopsy. I thought that was just a nice little touch there. Um, and then another pack that I used a lot in this build but I don't use very often is um, Get to Work. I feel like it's often quite a bit of a forgotten pack especially as it was the first I believe it was the first DLC, it was certainly the first expansion pack for The Sims 4 that came out. So, um, and it's, it's also, the items are okay, um, but I mean, they're, they're very businessy, so I wouldn't use them a lot for a home build, but for this, they were actually kind of perfect, and, and although it's a creative space for a creative sim and like a creative hobby and, and job and whatever, this sim is also like a businesswoman. I actually made a sim to to put in this. Um, and she's a businesswoman. She's ambitious and she's a perfectionist. And so because of that, it was it was actually really cool to use a lot of the get to work items like the um, the filing cabinet and then the shelves just there and kind of the the platforms to display your products. I thought that was just uh, that was a really nice touch. And speaking of which, also I really liked the the kind of little details that they add in in that pack for business owners. Like there's a, a kind of my first simoleon plaque on there, and a few different kind of awards and, and business certificates. And and like I say, I I did make a sim for this, and and she's really business savvy. You know, she she really takes pride 
in the fact that she has a really successful you know plopsy store so she's also a good businesswoman at heart and she likes to kind of display her achievements and um, she definitely is very successful because this studio the one room actually ended up costing 39,000 simoleons I believe it was because like always I think I went a bit crazy on the old uh, on the old decorations but again I was I was pretty happy with how it turned out and to be honest um, I think pretty much everyone plays with money cheats so you can just uh, just give yourself 39,000 simoleons if you want to build something like this. Um, I didn't put it on the gallery actually because I do use quite a bit of custom content because again I really wanted to focus on the decoration. Um, lots of like plants and cute little, um, little cluster items and to be honest the, the game does have a lot of good options but it's also limited in a lot of areas so I did end up wanting to to use some custom content just to give me a few more options uh, I guess you could I guess you could say but um, I, I haven't linked the custom content because I did use quite a few different pieces however if you see anything and you you want to know where it comes from then just drop a comment down below because I'll be happy to let you know where I got that from um, and then I just moved on to this little shelf here, which I really like because I found these kind of um, knitting books a bit later on. They uh, they obviously came with uh, Nifty Knitting and they're in the, the debug catalogue. Um, and like I said, she's quite a successful businesswoman and she's, she's really ambitious and she takes it super seriously. So I kind of imagine her sort of reading a lot of inspirational books books on like management and leadership and running your own business so she probably displays them quite proudly alongside of course all of her knitting stuff and her kind of awards and her creative creative tools I guess I used a lot of um as I said a lot of clutter from the nifty knitting pack and the get to work pack I think they worked worked quite well together. I suppose you could even make a, a knitting store. Like you can kind of make, that'd be quite a cool idea actually, like a half studio and then a half store. Like you could have like a studio at the back where you make the products and then at the front you have the store where you sell them all. Yeah, I'm gonna add that to my video list actually because <laughs> I like the sound of that one. Um, and then yeah, I just continued to decorate here. Definitely a theme. A theme of pink and blue for sure. Uh, I think the the colours that go really nice together and I saw a lot of like pastels and light colours and kind of girly themes for lack of a better word when I was looking at um, different Etsy studios both on YouTube and on Pinterest and you see so many like cute aesthetic studios and rooms and and really like creative ways to use spaces so i was definitely inspired by that to make this build um so i added a cork board which i often do for my builds anyway because you know adding like post-it notes you know maybe with the shopping list or, or things like that but here i'm kind of imagining you know she has like upcoming deadlines or projects or or maybe she kind of takes her orders over here at this desk and then she kind of puts them on the cork board next to her so she doesn't forget um, which I think is quite a nice quite a nice idea because again you know she's business savvy so she's she's organized you know and yeah she has a little like all her little reminders there and maybe like postcards that are perhaps like pictures from happy customers that she's served uh, I really like that idea I actually had so much fun decorating this room, just like getting in the mind of a someone who would have a, a Plopsy studio and just the little things they'd have lying around. Like I used that little um, it was get famous like stage dressing stuff as like props for photo shoots and and things like that. It was just really fun to get creative with this one. Uh, and then I'm just cluttering up that desk. I kind of had the vision that this desk is where she maybe makes her items or she perhaps packages them i think i put a few like little boxes there and um little kind of stationery and arts and crafts and stuff just imagining that perhaps that's where she makes and packs her products whereas 
other desks with the computer is probably where she deals with the more businessy side of things, you know, running her studio and advertising and responding to emails and stuff like that. Um, so then here with this shelf, that's just what I was talking about earlier. Of course, I have a little coffee cup because what office space is uh, is complete without a coffee cup? So, um, and then, yeah, those are just those books that I mentioned earlier. Probably she's like reading up on new, I don't know, like knitting techniques or trends or something like that. Again, she she takes it very, very seriously. This is her career and it's something that she is really proud of. Um, and then here I'm just using those purple boxes. They came with them um, cats and dogs. So if you have a cat or a dog that is a prowler, I know I'm, I've got a cat at the moment in the game, um, who is a prowler and it often comes back with these little like purple gift boxes and you open up and it's usually something like a, a cat toy or something um, that they've just bought back from around the world. But I kind of use them in this build as like a little box that they probably send off some of their, their products in. Just like you'd probably have like bits of packaging sort of scattered around, ready to send out to the customers and stuff in a few different sort of sized boxes, depending on, on what she's making. So I must admit, I really liked that little, um, that little uh, detail. And, and when you use the debug menu, you can actually find a lot of cool items I say I found a lot of stationery I found a few more like things that look like parcels and boxes and gift wrapped things and you can kind of imagine that's either her like receiving materials that she's ordered or she's sort of preparing orders to send out it's like cluttered but not chaotic if you know what I mean she's she's smart about her workspace she's She's got everything that she needs um, and it's definitely like lived in and, and clearly worked in. But at the same time, it's not, you know, it's not super unorganized and cluttered because once again, you know, she's on it. She she knows what she's doing. She's making enough money to fund a 39,000 Somalian studio. So, um, you know, she she's she knows what she's doing. She's good at what she does and she's proud of it. And, uh, you know, that's why she's got all kinds of awards and like certificates and stuff. I think I repurpose like a um, get famous acting award, sort of pretend maybe it's like a local business award or, or something like that. So, um, yeah, I was pretty, uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. That's I think that's pretty much it. And now we're going to go on to the sim that would own a studio like this. Going on to create a sim now and actually create a sim is probably my favorite part of The Sims 4. I do love building and I do love gameplay, don't get me wrong, but I actually I really like fashion in real life, so that probably has a bit of an influence, but I don't know. I've I've been that way like literally from The Sims 1. I've always loved making sims and I think no one will really argue with the fact that for all its flaws sims 4 create a sim is the best create a sim system that we have of all four generations uh, like the level of customization is better than probably one two and three combined um of course it's not perfect hence why i use a lot of custom content um but I mean, it's still, it's such a fun thing to use, like doing all the, the makeup and, and the accessories and, and everything. I, um, yeah, I really, really like making Sims. It's the first time like making a Sim on this channel. Um, and I would definitely like to do some more creator Sim content. Uh, and actually this, this particular girl, Amber, I believe I called her, you know, I really had a lot of fun with her. I love her like big blonde hair and and I kind of matched her makeup and her clothes to the style of the Etsy studio. So lots of like pastel colors, lots of pinks and blues and like really, really girly. But um, I did give her the traits creative, um, obviously, and perfectionist and ambitious, because again, I just want to reflect the fact that, you know, she she has fun and she's creative and she's kind of turned her passion and and her hobby into her career but actually at the heart of it 
you know, she's a good businesswoman. She knows what it takes to, to make money in the world. And um, don't be fooled by the fact that she's she's really girly. She wears a lot of pink. You know, she, she knows how to express herself because she's creative. But she's also not the kind of girl to be messed with because she's really smart. She's really confident and um i'll try to reflect that in her her clothes she's i mean again i used a lot of uh, custom content because i struggle to make sims without custom content uh these days but again like i like say I, I used a lot of like pinks and, and pastels and stuff but you know she looks so she's she's not like a super businessy looking sim but um, she looks like she's got herself together. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and I just want to say before I move on to the clothes as well, like, how is it that we have had The Sims 4 for six years and we still don't have the opportunity to lock hair and makeup for all outfit categories? Like, we had it in The Sims 3, so it's definitely possible. But um, the fact it's been six years and, and it's so annoying, especially, you know, if they have like piercings or use like those custom content eyelashes like I do, you literally have to manually go into each outfit category and add it in. And it would just save so much time to have like a lock option like we did in The Sims 3. But annoyingly, after six years, we still don't have it. So um but I mean, like I said, I, I actually enjoy making Sims, so it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just sort of doing her clothes now. Again, lots of pink. I don't know why I do it, because I have, I like pink. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't wear pink for every single outfit. Whereas like when I make a Sim, if they have a favorite color, every single thing that they wear is that color. And uh, she's definitely, She's definitely not exempt from that because I think she's like 100% pink at this point. But again, you know, she she looks really cute. She looks she looks like she knows what she's doing. She's she's creative, but she's she's a nice person, you know, and she's she's an all-round she's an all-round good sim. You know, she her aspiration is actually the knitting one, of course. Um, she wants to be able to make that absolutely hideous sweater that you get to make once you achieve that aspiration. Um, so she can sell it on her very, very successful Plopsy store. Um, again, if you want to know where any of the like custom content that I'm using comes from, please just let me know and I will endeavour to find out uh, where I got it from. I do have a Tumblr, which is at Maddie Simlish, same as, um, same as my YouTube. And I do often um, kind of reblog good custom content that I find. Uh, but I think that's pretty much the end of the video. If you liked this, then please give it a like, subscribe to my channel. That would be so, so appreciated. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think and what you want to see more of. Uh, but until the next video, bye.